Thanks for watching, everybody. Today, uh, guess what this video is about, Mike? No, I was going to ask you. <laughs> you have no what idea. do you want it to be about? <laughs> right. Okay, so we're going to talk about a very uh, hip concept in golf right now, but I also think an important concept in golf about how players use the ground in the golf swing. So how do you use the ground? Like? Well, you're hearing that all the time, but I had an opportunity. You know who Jack is, Jack Nicholas? Of course. Nicholas. Okay. Of course. So what I'm going to have you do is what I did with him, because obviously now there's a lot of information out there about ground forces and different things like that. But one of the aha moments for me relative to how a superstar, and we're talking a guy who probably hit the ball as far as anybody ever has, you know, as good a player as ever was, I spent a lot of time with him. I said, Jack, do you mind if I get behind you and put my hands on your hips so I can just feel when you make a swing what your hips do? So you're going to have to trust me here. Sure. So you get behind me. Okay. Now, come on up here and put your hands on your belt here. On my hip there, right like that. Okay, yep. so I got behind Jack. And I said, okay, go ahead and make your backswing. And he goes, boom. And I had my thumb, and it, it, he pushed back on my hand so hard, I wasn't anticipating that hard of a push back or a move and back. Thumb did right that there. kind of thing. Yeah, it almost hyperextended my thumb. I'm going to do that again. All right. So then he goes like this, but then what was even more impressive, when he started down, was how hard he pushed back there. Okay. And so all of a sudden, I'm standing behind him, and I'm holding his hips, and he, and, he, and boom. Oh, I mean, it was unbelievable how aggressive yeah. those two, they were passive but aggressive at the same time. Really strong moves. Okay. It wasn't, so it wasn't, it wasn't quick, but it was, it was moving. No, it, I wasn't going to stop it. Okay, right. So I'm sitting there with my hands there, and it wasn't a real fast move, but when he moved, it was so strong and so apparent what he was doing, there wasn't any way I was going to put the brakes on it. Okay. Okay, so that... When you start looking at ground forces and we start looking at what's happening and where I'm coming from, this whole, you want to get this push back and push back. So you're constantly pushing away from the momentum of the club, yeah. which Jack was really good with that. In fact, he rocked back on almost every shot. So he, whether it was a little wedge shot, he'd set up and he'd go, he'd, he'd turn his head, he'd go like this, he'd go, and he'd rock back. Yeah. And so I asked him, I says, you rock back on all these shots. I said, well, okay. So he goes to hit a shot, and he goes, little wedge shot. And he goes, yeah, I guess I do rock back. <laughs> right. And I go, well, why do you rock back? And his first comment was, well, I know I don't want to go forward. Okay. I said, why don't you want to go forward? He said, well, because the club's going forward. So if I went the same direction the club is going, it would slow down. So if the club's going forward, i got to be going back to make it accelerate. I went, wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's where, you know, like I say, this understanding of ground force is what we're really trying to do. You're trying to offset the momentum of the club, and then you're trying with the momentum of the club then by pushing back away from it to create acceleration through the ball. And that's very easy on your back because there's not force rotation. Okay. You know, and so there's a lot of ways out there, there's a lot of ideas about what you're going to do with your body, but if your body works in harmony with the momentum of the club and it creates acceleration at the right time, it's easy to create speed. It's also easy on your body. It's easy to duplicate because the timing isn't as difficult. You're not timing multiple things. You're only timing a couple of things. Okay, Mike, so I'm going to ask you to hit two balls. First one will be like will be like maybe half the distance that you hit that club. Okay. And then one will be the full distance you hit that club and then Talk to us about how hard you're pushing the ground in both those cases. Yeah, for the last couple weeks, and last time all I've really been doing is most days when I go from practice to start with. That was your full that distance? Was my, that down. was pretty close. Well, let's do that okay. again. I didn't do a very good demonstration. That's okay. All right, Mike. I'm a little early here today, so okay. okay. So, so <laughs> right. go ahead. So don't start over. Yeah. Mike, I'm going to say you have two shots, and okay. I want you to hit the first one. How far does that club go for you usually? About 165. Okay, so I want you to hit this first one 82 okay. or so, and then the second yeah. one, the full yardage. No, and talk good. to us about how does the magnitude really of how you're using the ground change as you're... The iron as I'm doing. As you're, as you're okay. hitting the shots. Okay. All right, so that one's going to go about 100 yards. Okay. And then, right, so now you give me another one. Now I'm going to make this is going to go to pretty much what my normal full swing would be with this club. Oh, great shot. Which that's going to go about, yeah, that went about 165. 
So what was the difference in the ground and in your and in your hips between the soft one and and the the pure one? Okay, for me, if you watch those two swings, I made about the same length back swing, and if you watch my down swing, everything looked about the same. And then all of a sudden, as the club got down here, it accelerated more. Well, how did I accelerate it? I didn't do it by pulling with my arms or that. I did it with what I did with my left leg. Okay. So as I came into the ball on the first one, as the club's coming down, I just kind of matched the momentum of the club with this pushing away mm -hmm. so that my body maintained its distance from the ball. It was constantly pushing away from the club so the circle stays the same. So then the bottom of your swing is consistent. But I didn't really add any any force or speed to it. I just kind of stayed with the club. The second one, I got back here, and when I got right here, so as the club got right here, as it was starting to go forward, I pushed back a lot harder with this, which accelerated the club forward more. It's like a snapping of a towel. It's the difference between going and going. Okay. Okay, so if I go like this, the towel doesn't snap much. Now, if I do the same thing to here, but then I go. All of a sudden, boom, the towel snaps. Would, would you say, and it's probably not, it might not be like totally right if we had a scale on you, but in your mind, would you say that the ball that went twice as far, you push the ground twice as hard? Roundabout? Yeah, well, okay, if you want to go, yeah, that's, I, I push, I'm more aggressive with how I pushed away from the momentum of the club. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's just about, everything was the same here, everything was the same here. Where people get in trouble when they try to add speed, is they try to add, they add it on their backswing and try to add it here and they lose it at the ball. And so I, you know, I've tried to say the same going back, the same starting down, and then I add speed right about in here, which is how, how hard I push away, which the harder I push away with my left leg, the more acceleration it causes to the club through the ball. Leg. Hit another one for me, Mike. Don't hit that. Okay. And then afterwards. All right. So I'm just going to go back. This, this is the same, so it looks nice and smooth, and it is. And this transition smooth. And then as I go through the ball, as the club gets right in, right in here, then this pushes away a little bit more aggressive. So when that pushes away again, it's like the snapping of the towel. It's going to create more. That's most I think he's going to better than. Going to create more club head speed. Court. Yeah. Now, see if you can do it. All right. It's definitely more fundamental game. So the key, the key with this, to yeah. max, to, to, yeah. to measure it out correctly, is you want to feel like as it comes down, as the club gets right here, as the club's moving into the ball, the club shaft, the club head, and the club and this hip are connected to where that's pushing back as that goes through the ball. At the same rate, like this. I don't think I got them up and down. Now, if you all, want it to go further, okay, then as you come down, you just push away from Monica. here harder. And that causes the club to accelerate. Okay. So, depending on the speed you want, you control it a bit by where you're going to. Yeah, that's good. Hit one like that first. Okay. So, you just go at that speed where you're kind of matching the push away with the speed of the club. You just match it. That's good. Now, if you want it to accelerate, all I want you to do is the same backswing, same timing to here, but now as you come through the ball, just push this back a little more aggressively as the club goes through the ball. Yeah, it's per that's perfect. Okay. But just go ahead and do that. All right. Same, same push. Same, same push. The push is just a little more aggressive. Oh, good job. Really? Yeah. Okay, now here's what it, when I watch your swing. And I keep watching. New video you. now. <laughs> right. yeah. That, when I watch you, I watch motions and how they sink out. Yeah. We've talked about watching, when I watch your swing, I see all the motions, but I see a miscommunication in some of the, the rotation and where the club is. Yeah. That one, everything synced out. So from my vision, when I'm watching how your body's moving relative to the club and where things accelerate, that was perfect. Now, it feels real controlled. It doesn't feel like you're putting a significant amount of effort into it. Your arms feel really relaxed. Yeah. But that was a lot of speed. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, if I want to hit it hard, I 
right off the bottom. I feel like tension in my yeah, swing yeah. right away here, oh, and then in the transition in here, and I lose the bottom. No, I mean, yeah. right now, there is some information, and there's some guys out there, some long drive guys, that when they talk about maxing it out in a long drive contest, mm -hmm. that they get them to take the club back a little faster, so when they load, they load the shaft even harder, but they keep maintaining acceleration. To the average person, if you get quicker going back, there's no way you're going to continue to add force to that club. Yeah, you just, you just hit your roof and, and you, you'll, you'll die some more back in here. Okay, so you're better off adding acceleration like you do on snapping a towel, yeah. rather than trying to move the towel really fast and snap it harder at the same time. Okay. Because it's it's back to this. It's, so if I have a towel coming at you, the towel's coming the same rate here. So if the towel's back here, it's coming the same rate, and then I just pull it back like this. And then the next time I go, now see, this was the same. Yeah. But this was different. Well, that's what your left leg and your left hip are doing to the club. So your left leg and your left hip cause the acceleration. Whippy towel snap. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it becomes pretty simple because yeah. now, now the sequence of things and how the forces are working are the same. So your circle matches. The timing of your hands and how they release is the same. You start jumping different things at different times and you have to have different hand actions. Can you do it? It's doable but very difficult. Thanks so much, Mike. Yeah, that was that was fun. You can see more about Mike over at Alaskagolf.com. If you use the promo code, you'll get a discount off of joining that really great, rich website, all the way from the one foot putt to a 300 yard drive and everything in between. It's really great. And also, if you click the subscribe button on this channel and click the bell, you'll get notified when I put new videos up, which uh, come out about three times a week. I think you'll like it. See you later. Bye.